figure, figure it out. out. I'm Dee. I'm Jeremy. Today on We'll Figure It Out, we're not figuring out anything. We're going to talk about how our lives have changed over the past year. Testing. Yeah, you're testing me. I'm testing your patience. Don't I do that every day? <laughs> It will be exactly one year on March 21st, I believe, is when the stay-home order went into effect. I don't recall. I know I was, it was a Friday, so I'll have to look at the calendar from last year. When we found out it was a Friday, we were supposed to go camping with the Cub Scouts and a lot of people canceled. And not knowing, like, the full details of everything that was going on, we did decide to go ahead and go camping. Plus, Noah's birthday is on the 17th, and so I didn't want to take away his last event to do before mm-hmm. lockdown. So we, di- we found out on the 18th that we were going to be going on lockdown or stay at home or was going to go into effect on March 21st. So on March 21st, it will be one year since the pandemic hit. And I use air quotes again. So quote unquote, the pandemic hit. Now we know that people were getting sick before that, but that's when the pandemic hit. We... Our government decided it was going to affect us enough to shut down things. Two weeks prior to the stay home order was basically Mardi Gras of 2020. Yeah. And it started getting pretty hairy in New Orleans and the surrounding parishes. The hospitalization rate was going up. The deaths were coming in. Things got a little bit crazy here. The hospitals were, you know, getting closer to capacity and we were running out of ventilators and the governor decided that everybody needed to stay home. That was, like, really scary for me. Mm-hmm. I recall it being scary for you. Was it scary for you? Not as much as it was for you. To me, it has different different implications. For you... Understandably, it's a little bit more serious. Right. No, I... I don't know. It's hard to explain. I guess I just had a different take on it at that point in time. In the initial get-go of all of this stuff, I was one of those people that didn't take it as seriously as a lot of other people did. Well, I was... I was... I guess... Not... Like the when it before the lockdown, right before mm-hmm. the stay home order, I was like, well, you know, we've had flus, we've had this, we've had that. It can't be that bad, right? Like, how bad can it be? And then watching the stuff with how Italy was doing, that kind of freaked me out. You know, we understand a little bit more about you know why their population was, you know, so affected and now but it was just like oh my gosh there are so many people dying every day this is insane then you have the fact that i work for a company that does medical coding for a business that is in the seattle tacoma area which you know was one of the first places that was getting hit prior to everybody else and I was coding pulmonary, which is all the people who do critical care, which is all the people who put people on ventilators and monitor people who are having respiratory issues. So I was seeing all of these notes of people who were on ventilators for 30 days and they were just struggling. And it was really, it really, really became real once I started seeing more and more of those notes and seeing it from a different perspective and seeing notes from 40 year old people and I was you know just turned 41 healthy 
no comorbidities and getting COVID and two weeks later they died. It was, it was hard. It was scary. Well, you know, and I think my viewpoint being different is I'm not in that field, so I don't get to see all the notes and you don't always relay to me everything that you see in your notes because, well, you're not really supposed to, but. <laughs> right. I mean, I. Not, you don't tell me any details or anything. It's just, you know. Generalize. Yeah. The generalization, but, you know, even still I respect the. Privacy the issues. The privacy issues. Yeah. But, you know, I'm in a totally different end of the spectrum on things. I work on cars. Right. You know, so for me, it's not like I I personally ever had, you know, any type of direct exposure with public and stuff like that. I limit myself to where I am. I already did that before. I'm not exactly the most socially, how do I put this? Interactive? Yeah. I, I'm not a social butterfly as it is. So I, I keep to myself for the most part. Anyhow, so I always just kind of deem myself as being more in the safe zone. You had natural I social distancing, distancing. Yes, natural <laughs> social, social distancing, and that is not B.O., just so you know. I do <laughs> use deodorant and stuff, and I, I shower every night and everything. I keep up on these kind of things. So, I mean, Well, <laughs> if you smelled, I wouldn't lay in bed with you, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, there were some other factors that kind of had me more concerned. You know, having three kids that live with us that were dependent on both of us i was diagnosed with like borderline hypertension so as things started to be revealed that people with hypertension were more prone to get more severely you know affected and or die it was like okay well we need to make sure that i don't get exposed because not only would it be you know very difficult if I had passed away from this for many, many reasons that I really can't go into. Be If I got ill enough to go into the hospital, I felt like that would be putting too much of a burden on you with Noah being mm-hmm. home from school, having two teenagers that, you know, don't necessarily self-regulate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, and if you take me out of the mix, it kind of like, not that Jeremy can't handle it, but, you know, we've only been married for (laughs) three and a half years. Three and a half years. And so, you know, his ability to understand, you know, what the boys needs is, is a bit limited in some areas. And so putting all of that on you, that kind of freaked me out. Like what, Mm -hmm. what would happen to, to everybody if I was in the hospital for two weeks a month with covid they would learn about day drinking (laughs) (laughs) i kid i kid (laughs) they would learn by example i hope (laughs) and not be like well forget it we're all just gonna drink because there's no point in life anymore i don't know that i guess that's why it made it so scary was because I didn't want to put the burden on anybody else to take care of my kids and they take a lot of work. My kids are not easy kids. And so that kind of was, I think what frightened me the most was being unable to take care of them and unable to work to provide for them financially. Mm -hmm. So, whereas you have other parents in your children's life that, yeah, support and, them and can take a, care of them if you're out of commission well the oldest one is an adult so he'd have yeah. to figure it out on his own the the middle but, one was an adult at that time too yeah and you know he's always well, at least within the last few years has always been kind of distanced from over here anyhow very so, independent mm-hmm. so he he's he's one that was definitely sometimes would jump a little bit to the extremer extremer is that a word more More extreme the more extreme side (laughs) yeah Yeah. and you know that's okay and that it's it's fine he's cautious and that's all that's all that really matters so that that affected us not seeing him for a while Uh, it affected me well all, all of us really but you know especially me because jordan was 
Jordan wound up having quarantine a couple of times. Well, he wasn't able to come home on spring break because well, we were under stay-at-home orders. Yeah. Well, spring break was, that's when everything was starting to really hit hard. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I felt I wasn't going to push the issue to have him come down here because I felt that we were in the epicenter of some of it mm-hmm. as opposed to him in, in another state, yeah. remote, remotely untouched by that at that time. At that time. But then it turns out that later on through the year, he's the one that gets more quarantine than anybody <laughs> else. <laughs> we've had what two quarant? Two, we've had two exposures, I should say, or potential exposures. Potential, I think Jordan's had three, but they all like happen like back to back. Yeah, where he had to quarantine from school and stay home. We're talking about ways that you know this last year has affected us. Is you know not seeing family, you know even his his children not being able to come mm-hmm. around because of different households and stay-at-home orders and travel restrictions um having a child in another state that puts a whole nother you know layer on the covid thing you know where my kids had to deal with me 24 7 because i worked from home they were home doing school as i said in another podcast the two oldest my two oldest they do homeschool noah was is in public school and so he was doing stay-at-home learning which was very I think for the first, like, month, they weren't doing anything. Yeah, and it was very crude how... Or no, it was two weeks, because it was the first two weeks was like, okay, stay home for two weeks to stop the spread. Yeah. And then when things weren't settling down, then they extended it into May, and then they, like, were scrambling to figure out how to educate these kids for the last month of their, you know, (laughs) their schooling. And then, like, we had, I think we did Google Classrooms a little bit, and... It was kind of stressful trying to manage keeping Samuel and Jonathan on track on their schooling. Then keeping Noah on track with his schooling. But then, like, when they're done with their school, they have all this free time, but I'm still working. And then they're in the house and trying not to be distracted and trying to figure out, you know, where I can work and where they can work. And, you know, like, I was working in a closet in my room at that time Mm -hmm. and trying to go they they all had their school set up in their own rooms which were all on the same floor and it's all in the same hallway but my work is production based so if i go get out of my office go into noah's room check on him go into samuel's check on him go into jonathan's check on him it was like five minutes that i was losing of work which was starting to affect my production and i was like I can't function like this. Like I'm stressing out about not spending too much time away from work and not taking, you know, 10 breaks every hour to check on the kids. And so we wound up remodeling, (laughs) not really remodeling, but we put dividers up in the garage and I wired up the garage to be a home office slash school room. Yeah. So we have network cables pulled all the way around and, extra extension cords and power outlets and different lighting and Mm -hmm. new fan and (laughs) so we had that we we worked on getting like curtains and we did a pvc pipe divider i'm gonna make a blog like that kind of highlights the different things that we talk about on this podcast but kind of in a condensed version and i'm gonna put some pictures up of what our office looked like it's kind of a mess right now because we've made changes since then (laughs) (laughs) because i have been restricted to not working in the office and working in a recliner or in the bed because of neck and back issues it kind of only worked for a couple of months maybe six months and then like that long well i stopped working in the office around december so it was it was like what june when we i don't even remember when we finished cleaning out that side of the garage we have a double car garage and we've been on a three-year-long project to get it organized (laughs) so we're like well well, let's just push everything over to one side get half of it ready we laid down some throw rugs and put the the desks in there and all of the computers and stuff and we insulated the garage doors and yeah we have one sealed we need to seal the other one so it will stop raining into the garage. <laughs> it was working out really well. I mean, it was a lot less 
stressful on me to check up on the kids mm-hmm. and make sure that they were staying on task and and they stayed on task really well since i've been injured the the staying on top of things has dwindled and you know trying to figure out the new normal of of trying to help kids with adhd while having adhd and <laughs> chronic pain it's been fun no it really hasn't but you know we make through so that's you know changing had to change stuff around the house to be able to function with the everybody home <laughs> yeah with everybody home right exactly so except for for jeremy except for that what two weeks uh, in april they did us two weeks on two weeks off yeah and that was weird or no one week on one week off yeah was... one week on one week off yeah so it was that was kind of cool though because it was you know i had nine days off in a row twice in april <laughs> yeah that was that was interesting. That was when I actually started doing all the stuff in the garage with right. the other major cleanup and stuff, mm-hmm. and running the power along that wall and all that stuff. So other ways that this year has changed for us. So we live in the New Orleans area, and New Orleans was the target of. Many a hurricane this year. <laughs> Every single hurricane was like the path was coming straight to New Orleans and then it would divert. And it was coming straight to New Orleans and then it would divert. And then it came straight from New Orleans. Then it wasn't even the last one that came straight from New Orleans. I think it was like the fifth one or the sixth one. And there was another one that came after that. So we had a very busy hurricane season and then even trying to figure out, well, what are we going to do? Do we need to evacuate and if we evacuate, where do we go because COVID? Yeah. That was a whole new spin on it. Then we lost electricity for like four or five days. That was what, Wednesday through, I think we got power back Sunday? Yeah. So four days. Yeah. I think that's right. And thankfully we did wind up getting one of the generators when we had like the first or second when those two hurricanes were like, they're coming straight for New Orleans, and then they diverted, and one went to Lake Charles, and one kind of just dissipated. We were like, well, if there's two hurricanes coming at us, we, I think we might need a generator. <laughs> and we wound up actually using it. So, you know, that was a different thing, trying to figure out evacuation plans post-COVID, and what that would look like. And then, um, you know, a lot of... People from Lake Charles came into New Orleans to evacuate because they didn't have any place to stay because they were just devastated. So we had more people in the city and they had to completely change the way that they handle evacuees. It's, it's been interesting to say the least. And then when things started to lighten up and we were able to do some things like I think my saving grace for a while was being able to bring the kids to the trampoline park Mm -hmm. you know they they have i felt safe because they were cleaning things very well it's a very open warehouse that they renovated and used and so there's opportunities for kids to not be right on top of each other and they were restricting the amount of kids that were going in it at the time so i guess that was during the summer that yeah it was Mm kind of when the summer hit you know after all the we were in phase two. So I think when we went to phase two, we I was like, okay, y'all get memberships. Y'all need to get out of my house. I need to be able to work. <laughs> <laughs> so they would go and, you know, never got any exposure from that. Thank, thank goodness. Then it would increase our social interactions very slowly. You know, like there's a few friends that I, I let the kids, like, go hang out with. But... Are even now a year later we do not interact with as many people as we did prior and then you know i guess the biggest thing was not being able to go see your mom yeah well i mean i've seen her but (laughs) yeah i mean i haven't i haven't seen her in over a year now or close to a year i mean we did we did drop off some crawfish on some of the times we did a boil but it was just you know high yeah away from the car 
kind of thing. Um, his mom is in one of the higher risk categories, and so we've chosen not to go over there to reduce her risk. Now, you've gone over there and, you know, do the mm. whole mask and yeah. visit socially distanced. Yeah. Uh, I think, see, while Jordan was in over the summer, we went one time. And y'all went during the holidays. And went during the holidays for, it was bef- before, no, it was after Thanksgiving. After it Thanksgiving. It was thanks- after Thanksgiving. Okay. That we went. So that's, yeah. Not being able to see some of our family, you know, changing the way that we interact. We did a Zoom call for her birthday. Mm-hmm. Yep, we did a Zoom call. <clears throat> that was real fun. That was. She it really was, enjoyed it. <laughs> it was an unexpected over two hour Zoom call. <laughs> <laughs> I had my sister in England, my cousin in I think she's DC. In, in DC right now. Yeah. I had some nephews. Let's see, I think. I can't remember where Ian is. Yeah, the, Ian and and his fiance and his fiance were yeah. in a different state. Yeah, and then you know Darren doesn't live real close to us. They're yeah. you know, but they're still in the same state as us. Yeah, and then was did Evan come over for that? Evan came here for that. Yeah, Evan was here for that. Yeah, yeah. Evan and Colin were here. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so Jordan, Jordan, Jordan joined in. Yeah, that's right. He did. He came. So we had an yep. international Zoom call. Yeah, you know, cool. from London to the states. Yeah, all over the place. Yeah, it was good. It was. It turned out really. Good. She was very surprised, and I'm glad we could get that all worked out. Do you have water? Yes, I need some. Morning. It's got ice. So cold. <laughs> Sorry, I need cold drink. I, know. I like cold beverages. I like cold beverages. Uh huh. That's why I stick them in the fridge. <laughs> when we met, I had absolutely no idea what that was, and he's like, "Stick them in the fridge," and I was like, "What?" He's like, "Beverages," and I was like, "What is that?" And he had to show it to me, <laughs> and I was like, "Okay, that's funny." So. G love and special sauce, cool beverages. <laughs> I love I love your audio file <laughs> knowledge and like pretty much any conversation that we have turns into someone talking about lyrics yes. or quoting lyrics. It's kind of funny. Not um, a day goes by that I can't uh, connect a lyric to a situation. I know, and multiples sometimes. And then I love when your kids jump in and they start like, <laughs> and I'm like, what are y'all even talking about? And like, it's it's a song. I'm like, oh, I should have known that. <laughs> like, I know some songs and I can get it, but some songs I'm like, that's an obscure song I haven't either heard in a while or I've never heard. <laughs> or I just don't know the lyrics that well. <laughs> what are other ways our life has changed in the last year? How we get groceries. How we get groceries. In the last year, for the most part, more recently, Dee has gone to go get groceries. But for the most part, it was primarily me. Anything that had to be gotten outside of the house, I was the one doing the running. Because we only wanted to take the chance with one person being out. Because, you know. Reducing the risk of exposure. You know, limiting the contact points. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Initially, it was when I would go to the store. I'd pull up, open the garage door, unload everything into the garage, disinfect everything in the garage, and have to disinfect myself. And Oh, yeah. It was like we were taking all the steps and precautions, and now we kind of just... I'm like, eh, if we get it, we're going to get it. You know, wiping down this box of cereal isn't going to prevent it. You know, we, we still take precautions, but we, you know, have relaxed some of our protocols, I guess. Yeah. We're not as hyper vigilant, but we are still vigilant. You know, we definitely take it seriously, and we wear a mask when we're in public. And even though I have claustrophobia, and it's really hard sometimes, especially when it's hot or like when we're walking through Walmart, he can mm-hmm. walk at a regular pace, and I'm like, slow down, I can't breathe. <laughs> like I gotta take this slower. <laughs> it's it's can it can be a struggle when you have claustrophobia to be in a mask for a very long time 
to or trying to exert yourself while you're in a mask. That's I think that's the thing I have the most difficulty with is when I'm exerting myself. I haven't I mean, I've rarely left the house in the last two years. I mean, I can probably count on all fingers and all toes the amount of times I've left the house and I mean, other than driving kids places, like like mm-hmm. going to a place and getting out of the vehicle, you know, like I would go bring them to, you know, the trampoline park, but I would just drop them off and pick them up. And then, mm-hmm. I don't know, I just, I, I feel like I've been home a lot. Mm-hmm. And since I don't get out daily to go to work, it's even more. <laughs> I was working from home before this, you know, so... I know some people that was a big change for them to start working from home and, you know, figuring that out. But it looks like, you know, a lot of people are kind of continuing that and transitioning to more virtual work, which I think is really cool. Yeah, they still can't get me to work at home. (laughs) I've been trying to figure out a way, but, you know. Yeah, unless you can get the the cars to come to you. Yeah, and have no. all the tools and racks and nope, it's <laughs> a lot of stuff. A whole lot of nope. A whole lot of nope. <laughs> what could you imagine trying to push one of them cars with the dead engines from the dealership all the way over here? <laughs> we have one of those pushers now. We oh got, yeah, we got that. <laughs> Very, very slow. Yeah, I bet. It took you <laughs> like three weeks. Uh, <laughs> he he works on engines a lot, so he has to push cars in a lot. So that have locked up engines. Mm-hmm. I lost my creativity for a while because of all the stress. And I got furloughed for a little while. So financially, it's, you know was a struggle for a little while you know we weren't hurting we were still being able to pay our bills and we were eating we were we could afford everything that we had we had to cut back a little bit here and there you know thank thankful for unemployment because if it wasn't for that we'd be hurting even more because i had to pay back my medical premiums which was a good chunk of the unemployment went straight to paying off medical premiums I think what saved us the most money was cutting back on the crack rock. <laughs> I think we should have done it a lot sooner. We, we, we'd be so much better off. Honey, seriously? <laughs> what, was it? what was it that day What we were walking through the store? We were in, we were in the feed store. I can't remember exactly what it was. Oh, you're talking about getting another dog. Oh, yeah, we were we were looking for a pet for for Noah because Noah has been doing really well through this whole thing and he's he's a really great student. He doesn't give us a whole lot of trouble. You know, last year was challenging for us on multiple levels, not just the pandemic, but before the pandemic we had, you know, some family stuff going on and it was um, a struggle for some of us and he did really well through the whole thing and he was helping with the dogs and the other boy there one dog is for for samuel one dog is for jonathan and mm. sometimes they get a little selfish and don't like to share the dogs with noah but noah yeah. was taking care of them i'm like you know what if y'all won't share <laughs> your dogs with him then i guess i'll just get him a vet so we were like looking to see like what he would want and i said well are we just gonna have to get another dog then I can't remember the exact phrase that I said. said, I guess it's not too late to start smoking crack, is it? I (laughs) I mean, it just came out like right after I said that, and it was so unexpected. I almost fell on the floor. (laughs) I guess it's not too late to start smoking crack, is it? (laughs) (laughs) So we would love to hear, you know, about how, you know, your past year has changed. How are things now that we're one year from, you know, I guess the initial lockdown in our area. I don't know. Other areas went on lockdown different times. You know, has it been a year from you since, you know, you first started like being affected by 
different protocols and shutdowns and interludes and whatnot prologues and intermissions <laughs> and what what does life what did life look like before that it's changed now and you know how are you handling it all if you're not handling it well i highly suggest therapy it's pretty much what's gotten me through this whole thing i think without my therapist i probably would have gone into a panic attack and been in the hospital for that <laughs> don't um, do that because none of us can go and see you and then we'll yeah i that. know that would have been terrible you know i would not have gotten through it without you she says that could you imagine me as a single mom of three trying to work full time with kids home from school N not to mention that I would be living in a 760 square foot house at that time mm -hmm. with nowhere to go, having to work, cook, school, grocery shop, and keep my sanity. She's not giving herself enough credit. I think she could do it. Um, I probably could, but I probably would be like admitted to the inpatient psych ward at some point <laughs> again i'm going to refer back to the day drinking comment <laughs> <laughs> i may have been doing more of that no no i honestly i i don't know if i could have handled i mean i know i've handled a lot in my life but that you know with everything else that was going on at that time and the emotional stress that i was under because of other factors mm -hmm. plus the pandemic plus trying to work and you know it, i may not even have had the job that i had and the job that i had previously would not have been understanding the way that my job now is so that would have put more stress on me so i would have been i would have been struggling i maybe i would have done it maybe i would have handled it but i would have been struggling a lot more than i was and i was already having daily panic attacks and anxiety and stuff here with the support that I did have. So I just couldn't, I couldn't imagine what it would have looked like without having your support. Fine. <laughs> he really has a hard time taking compliments. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I could be here for you, even though I know you could do it on your own. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why you married me, because you knew I could do it on my own. Right? <laughs> I didn't need you, but I definitely appreciate you. That's for sure. Yeah. Now, given what I just said, where I have been since November with the chronic pain and nerve issues and barely being able to work, I would not have been able to handle all of that on my own. I would have had to have help some, from somewhere, but I don't know that anybody in my life would have been able to handle it, given me help. So, once again, over this past year, you have proven your worth. I shall keep you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yay! <laughs> you get to keep me, too. <laughs> for serious though i really do appreciate you and you know it, it did help that we do like each other and being home with each other so much has not really been an adjustment for us yeah we enjoy each other's company you know i'm kind of fond of her oh thanks babe <laughs> <laughs> fond of you too we've made that work really well so. yeah we figured that out we did fit look we made we did figure something out today but we did, before the podcast, we figured out plenty. We figured out laundry. <laughs> we figured out groceries again. We figured we, out why the dryer wasn't drying all that well. Oh, yes, we did figure that out. You know, you should check, check your lint trap and your, uh, the, the, the vent. The vent. The vent pipe. The vent pipe. Check your vent pipe. And if your dryer is not drying well, maybe it's clogged up with, you know, three pounds of lint. 
Which could also cause a fire, which we're very mm. thankful. Fire. Don't. Okay. <laughs> okay, Beavis. All right, I'll leave that alone. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Edit that out. No, I'll leave it in. That was <laughs> funny. <laughs> fire. Fire. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> the, dog, the dogs don't like your Beavis and Butthead impression. I'm too bad for them. <laughs> Hush! Go lay down! Somebody needs to deal with you four-legged children. I was going to ask the kids. To give us her, their input on how their lives have changed over this last year. Get a different perspective on it. Okay, so Samuel, we're doing a podcast about how our life has changed in the last year. So I would like to ask you, how has your life changed and what is your like perspective on the difference after covid it got, life got suckier, and I got stuck at home a lot. <laughs> That's about it, though, because I didn't go out of the house and do anything. That was it? Yeah. Just home more? Yeah. How are you handling being home more? It's boring. I want to go out and hang out with friends or be able to go out and do things. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, I can appreciate that. Oh, wait, I'm not supposed to say that back. No, you're supposed to say I understand. I understand that. He needs to get on me about saying I appreciate that. Because, like, what do you appreciate about that? You thankful for it, hmm? You thankful for it being sucky? Thanks, Mom. All right. Thank you. Okay, so, Noah, we're asking everyone that's home how their life has changed since COVID like the last year how's it been for you well I haven't been able to see my friends well this is the uh cons I haven't been able to see my friends as much and I had to go virtual and that was annoying because I didn't really get to socialize much yeah. Which got annoying. Because mm-hmm. all I was doing was sitting on a desk. Doing schoolwork and what was done. And then going to play Forza Horizon. <laughs> <laughs> Which sadly we don't have. <laughs> yeah, no. A bunch of our electronics blew up in this power surge. So, mm-hmm. so what are other some other things that have changed for you this year? this past year we've had to wear masks which is getting more and more annoying now so basically you've just been annoyed <laughs> yeah that's literally all that's happened is covid annoyance annoyance or annoyance less covid still annoyance a few pros is that well i got a birthday shirt saying my ninth birthday the one where i was quarantined 2020 yeah which, speaking of birthdays, my birthday is Two days coming away. up. Two yep. days away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This, I'm probably going to post the podcast on your birthday. Happy birthday, Noah. Yay. You have a podcast. Woo. <laughs> uh, Hub Scouts is essentially just canceled. Like, there hasn't been any Cub Scouts this year or last year. This school year. This school year, right. Pros for this year, 2021, is that COVID is somewhat less extreme and you can go places more Mm -hmm. than you could yeah we recently went to phase three here in louisiana yeah which means that it's getting better and less people are getting sick which is awesome yeah i wonder how ziplining is gonna be i don't know that's what we're supposed to do for your birthday but we gotta wait for jonathan not Mm -hmm. to have a sprained ankle yep and then I was thinking maybe we could wait till Jordan gets in town. So that he could he can come. Do, yeah. So we'll just celebrate a little late. You know, that's one of the things that we do with COVID is we make changes when we need to. Because random stuff happens. Because it's 2021 and like 
2021 COVID. COVID equals unluckiness. Unluckiness equals 2021. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure I follow you there. <laughs> what do you look forward to this year? I look forward to less COVID. COVIDicity. COVIDicity. <laughs> COVID infections? Yes, and deaths due to COVID. Mm -hmm. And I hope that COVID equaling unluckiness, the unluckiness part gets cut out and deleted and starts becoming luckier until COVID is gone. All right, well, thank you for joining our podcast. Mm Mm-hmm. No problem. Okay, so Colin, our Hello. eldest, Hello. our most eldest and wisest son. That's me. <laughs> Please grace us with your knowledge of and perspective of how your life has changed since COVID in the past year. Uh, okay. Well, uh, to begin with, things started out not that much different because I don't leave the house very often. <laughs> <laughs> But I was coming into a new job at the start of it all. Kind of put a lot of things on hold. Your transition was kind of delayed. Yeah, you could say that. And then, you know, there's just been the frustration of having to work the whole time and pick up as many hours as I could. Yeah, that first, like, couple of months you were working like crazy. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I've been deemed essential. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. uh, so it's just been a big stress. Yeah. Ultimately. I don't know. How do you think you've been handling the stress of it all? Uh could have been worse. Could have been worse so far. Could have yeah. been worse. Yeah. 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 Day drinking. <laughs> I haven't I haven't done it, hardly any day drinking at all. <laughs> He's barely even done night drinking, honey. Yeah, I, I don't Yeah, I ended up on the five AM schedule. I don't I don't really drink. A lot of naps. A lot of naps, <laughs> yeah. How did you cope? I napped. I napped, and I cooked. Slept through it. And I slept through it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, pretty much. Well, that's cool. Well, thank you for your input. I appreciate it. Yeah, sorry it wasn't more verbose. <laughs> I mean, you, it, you are, you know, you are who you are. I can't expect you to be different. That's fair. <laughs> that's fair. Thank you for having me on the podcast. We get close to the mic. That's that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Goodbye. Jonathan is crippled right now. <laughs> he's incapacitated. Yeah. Jonathan is on crutches at the moment because he sprained his ankle. And I keep looking at his ankle going, oh, man, that looks bad. And he's like, I'm fine. I'm like, you're on crutches. You're not fine. <laughs> <laughs> So, I did take him to the doctor. He did get an x-ray. He's not broken. He's just sprained. So, it's been it's been challenging the last couple of that last week without his help around here cuz everybody's had to kind of mm-hmm. pitch in to do his chores and which includes me, mm-hmm. which I haven't been doing a whole lot of chores, so I was kind of scared about how that was going to affect my neck and my back, which thankfully it didn't like incapacitate me again. Yeah just kind of had it take it easy for a couple of days so but i feel like 2020 threw us a lot of curveballs and not just covid yeah so 21 is a challenge also still so it's getting better though i, I feel like i feel like we're breathing easier this year you know, like financially, emotionally, every everybody's kind of settled in a routine. You may be, you know, uncontent with some things, but that's not any different than spend the last twenty years. I suppose. <laughs> and I'm not talking about him being in con- uncontent with me. Well, yeah, because I haven't known you for twenty years. No, you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> just make that clear he's very content with me and and i could tell you 
Because I know. <laughs> Don't take it from him. Take it from me. <laughs> Believe her. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, so, yeah, please g- give us a you know comment about how y- y'all have handled this past year if y'all are doing well if y'all have struggled and how you've managed through your struggles and you know i know there's resources out there if you are struggling and we have another stimulus check coming so you know hopefully that helps those who are in a financial struggle right now if you're having a hard time getting food on your table don't be afraid to ask for help thankfully we've been able to provide food this mm-hmm. whole time and but we do know some people who were in some situations and we you know tried to help them with some food when we can yeah even though we were going through our own struggles we try to help those who are struggling more and that that, that helps me yeah. it's mm-hmm. a key perspective that it always could be worse and i'm very thankful for what we have yeah i don't think Honestly, as hard as it may have been a few times with some of the finances going up and down, and I can't say that I've ever been truly unhappy with how we were doing financially. Yeah. I've been thankful for the fact that we've been able to manage through Yeah, it just as as we have. It really, all it did was prolong some of our goals. You know, it, it set back some of the goals that we had. And I guess goals that we may had made prior, yeah. we would have been looking at being completely out of debt by this uh, summer, I think it was supposed to be August, August this year, and you know we did throw another vehicle into the mix, so that extended us. But you know I think we're not too far off from the August now. It's probably delayed a year. No, yeah. but I think in the next year we'll be able to recover from. So it just pretty much was kind of like, pause on goals for one year, reset, <laughs> let's do it again. Yeah, but we have some new goals this year. We won't discuss them. No, we're not. We're going to keep you in the dark. You may find out. You'll have to follow us and subscribe to all of our, you know, the podcast on whatever, mm. whatever medium, media, guess. whatever app you choose to listen to podcasts on so you can stay in the know and see what our goals are because we're not going to tell you anytime soon you'll and we're just going to throw it out there one day and you'll never know what day it is so you have to keep listening Um, i will say this much i can tell you what it is not it's not another baby yep (laughs) (laughs) it's not another pet either (laughs) we are Um, done accumulating breathing things Okay, so my pet rock is okay. And 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 your collection of toenail clippings? That's good, too. You can keep those. And continue to collect. Now you tell me. <laughs> you threw them out when we met, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's a joke that goes back to one of the first conversations we had. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was... Let's see. You had sent me the message before you gave me the phone. your phone number. Right before you gave me your phone number. I seem like a nice enough guy. You seem normal yeah. enough. I guess I can give you my phone number. Right. And the first thing that I text her as soon as I get the phone number is... <laughs> I haven't told you about, about my, my toenail, toenail clipping collection. collection. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> but she came right back with her earwax collection. So, I mean... <laughs> True, I did. I forgot about that. I was like, yeah, but I haven't told you about my earwax collection, so it's all good. <laughs> I have to say that I think you know, our ability to understand each other's humor is one of the best things that we have going for us, honey. <laughs> and it's definitely one of the, the things that attracted us to each other was we could be crazy and weird and laugh <laughs> through it all. We understand each other's weirdness. So, so, we want to thank you for joining us on this recollection podcast of what 
has gone on in our lives this past year and how our life has changed because of COVID. Did I sound a little professional when I said that? Almost mysterious. Mysterious? Okay. <laughs> creepy? Maybe a little. <laughs> yeah, that was a little creepy. <laughs> All right, guys, y'all have a great day, and we hope that you return for our next episode where we'll, we'll figure, figure it, it out. out. Or we won't. Or we might. Who knows? <laughs> Not like we haven't figured it out. We just hope we do figure it out. <laughs> I have it all figured out. I just won't let you in on it until you're ready. That is so frustrating. I hate when you do that. You have it all figured out in your head and you keep it to yourself and you're like, well, yeah, I was thinking that for like the last three weeks. And I'm like, really? Why didn't you share with me? I just wanted to know what you wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to say, wait to see what you said. Thanks. All of that stress for no reason. You had it all figured out. Why didn't you just let, clue well, me in? I thought it was kind of a crazy idea in my head until I heard you say it. And it's okay. Here it is. <laughs> oh, so. Okay. So I have to be the one that comes up with the crazy idea for you to agree. But you already had the crazy idea. I get it. I Maybe. see. I see. No idea. <laughs> what am I going to do with you? Day drink. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done too.